Hey everyone, it's Brenda. I'm here today to do a quick play video with you guys. I figured I'd try this out. I wanted to show you um, something I'm going to do today and maybe you want to do if you haven't already. Um, I've got some watercolors here. I have black, uh, Prussian blue, crimson red, and a lemon yellow. And those are actually, let me see, in case you want to know what brand, I blocked them out. They are the Essentials brand, and these were gifted to me. Um, and I have a little spoon there that I can mix with, which is great because you want to dilute these. We're not going to use them full um, full strength, and you always dilute them with some water anyway because they are watercolors, um, whether it's on the paper or to the paints themselves. But we're going to make them more like inks today. I have a spray bottle that I'm going to use and also just a jar of some extra water to hydrate these more and um, make them inky. And I'm using just this quick artist loft paper that was gifted to me a while back just to use it up and it is the 9x12 and what I've done with those is just gone ahead and cut them into four. So it was four and a half across the top on the nine side and then directly in half at six and the other so you get four sheets out of one sheet of paper and these are perfect so you could cut these down and be your card fronts or um, any kind of background that you want honestly and a straw just in case things kind of puddle up on you so I figured maybe I'd try to do a few with these with you today maybe one or two and let you see how I do it. so first thing I'm gonna do is actually add some water to these and I figured I'd show you how I do it instead of doing it off camera. Um, I start with my lightest color first and I'm just going to mix it up until it's completely diluted. Kind of reminds me of um, tiny Easter eggs as a kid. And you can see there are, there's still plenty of pigment and I just broke the spoon. That's okay. I'll use um, I use the straw on it. It's the first time I've done that. Okay, so we'll do the red, which you would think would be more pigmented than um, the blue, but it, it really isn't. And just to show you, you really don't need the spoon. The straw works. Anything, tea stir, um, the cheap ones that you get, uh, like when you go out to eat or whatnot. And I do have. Um, some more videos I'm going to come out with. I'm not quite sure when I'm going to be putting them out just yet or when I'm going to get around to filming them, but I'm going to do my best to try to stay with a, a steady flow. And I have company. Hold on one second, guys. Be right back. Sorry, guys. That was uh, my dad coming down. And I didn't continue without you, so I'm just going to add the water here to the black as well as the, after the blue. And I know I spend no time for you guys, but it was quite a while. It was good to see my dad, though. Okay. So I get the Prussian blue mixed up. And these little containers, I know um, some people might ask. Um, when you go out to eat, you know the ketchup containers? Well, I always grab an extra one, so I have it on hand that I can rinse out to use for my paint pots. Okay. Now, to get started, what I'm going to do is actually wet my paper just by using the spray. And you want one that's an adjustable so you can get a nice uh, spray on it. And just spritz, spritz your paper. You can always add more later. If you saturate it too much, it'll take it longer to dry. Um, you always start with your lightest color first, and what I'm going to do is actually just pour. And you can see the quality of the paper would make it flare out more. And this is a cheaper one, but you could still make it happen just by adding a little more water. And then picking it up and twisting and turning. And if it falls off into your mat below, that's fine because you can always just dab that back up. Um, 
and I kept this fairly light and I'll show you just dabbing that up so it gets more of a definition of the color on the paper and add a little bit more maybe a little bit of the red and I think what I'm going to do is just add some of the colors together and just kind of move it around without using the straw at first and these are great to make your backgrounds like I said um, and the best thing about these is they're watercolors so you can always add onto them later and you see how that's pooling like a lot there and making a really dark color you could tap it I'm just gonna let this run off and you can do layers and I really do like how this one looks um, bring this closer so I think I want to let this dry because I have an idea um, I actually want to draw on top of these I think I want to put a little bit more color down this end first and I don't know if um, any of you guys have any of the issues <laughs> that I do I have a really hard time talking while I'm crafting um, sometimes I overdo it a little bit and go too far and end up messing it up <laughs> in my mind even though it's not because there is so much you could do with them and to make them you know better than they were in the beginning even though you might have thought that it can't get any better what you had was the best um, right here you can see we're starting to get just a little bit muddy in the colors watercolor is notorious for that that's how you know when um, you have overworked it but you can remedy that if you move it quick enough and this is where I'm going to leave this one and we will start another one here. Um, if you want that to dry faster, you can you can so totally uh, let me see. Take your cloth and just dab up some of that paint. Now I'm going to show you what happens when you dab up some of that paint. You dab up the color as well, so it'll make more of a textured surface, which I'm okay with. But just so you have an idea there, and I'll get another piece. And this one I'm going to do, let's see, we'll do a little bit of yellow, and I'm going to do it without the water first. So, if you think you have too much, the best thing about that is I'm going to pour a little off. I'm going to put, hopefully on my frame, okay. A little red. And I'm going to start with that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a dry painting. And I'm just going to blow with the straw from a distance back. I'm going to mix those colors. I'm going to hold it kind of tapered. You can see where I've put an indent here. And you can get splattered effects. And like right off the bat, like if I want to do a digi, a digital image on here, this could be like almost like a little angel. I mean, there's so many things that you could see, like looking into the clouds and whatnot. <sighs> Quick breaths will give you these thin, thin lines, which kind of remind me of like the whole ink blots. <sighs> Long ones will make more of the quick lines there. And I'm going to go deep dark this round. I think what I'm going to do is I am going to just get some on here and make more of splatters. This way you don't have to just start with those same colors. And where the black has gotten with the red, I can blow on there and make different colors. Now, And this one I want to leave like this because I think this is going to make a really neat background. And I will go on and maybe do one more background with you guys for now. And we will do just a tiny bit of water. Actually, no, the last one we did that. So we're going to put saturated with some water. And 
Let's start with some yellow and do the trick with the straw in here and just tap this on. And you can see some of it is spreading out. And you can see some purple here from the blue and the red that have mixed on the paper, but that's fine. I'm not worried by that. And these inks can be saved if you want to. Um, you really don't use much, so you don't have to. Um, but even if you leave them out for a long time, somewhere where they won't spill or whatnot, or you could cap them, um, that's when you end up, uh, if they dry out, you can always add more water. So watercolor is really, really easy. But here you can see that we have some greens mixing. You could dump the excess off if you want. Yeah, slide it around here, and I like how this one came out too. And see, little, just little amounts of work that it takes to get really nice backgrounds with watercolors. These are great for putting your images on, layering uh, your journals, all kinds of stuff. So I hope you guys like that. And what I'm going to do is, I'll probably make a blog post when I actually use these all, um, so you can check my blog for that. Otherwise, you'll see them in a future video. If you have any questions or anything, leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Have a great day, guys. Bye.